I just want to share a little bit from the Word of God. You know, last Sunday I shared from uh, Philippians 3, verse uh, 13 and 14, where Paul says that uh, I forget what lies behind and, and look forwards to what lays ahead of me. And uh, you know what that does mean that uh, that we can wipe our memory of our brain and forget everything that has uh, happened in our the past of our life. But what it means, we do not dwell on those things in the past. Uh, some of them we might forget with time, but uh, you know a lot of them we we never forget. But uh, we we do we do not dwell on them. <clears throat> we let them go. And we look uh, to what is ahead of us. But, uh, you know, reading the book of Psalm, we find many places there where it tells us uh, things that we should not forget. And uh, that's what I want to look at uh, Psalm 103. Uh, first three verses there. Psalm 103, 1 through 4. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquities, who heals all our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. See, David is saying here, he's telling himself never to forget all the things that God has done in his life, all the good things, all his benefits, he said. Forget not all his benefits. So, and it's the same with us. Like all of us <clears throat> uh, can say that the Lord has done many good things to us, and we should also remind ourselves never to forget the things that the Lord has done for us. Just like David says, and never, and forget not all his benefits. We truly receive many benefits from the Lord and those are the things we are not to forget you know there's times where we fail uh, many times we fail but you know we do not focus on them we should not uh, uh, dwell on them but uh, the things that the Lord has done for us the good things we are never to forget we are always to remember the things that the Lord <coughs> has done in our lives and is doing in uh, Psalm 107, you know, I was reading uh, through the book of Psalms, and especially some of the chapters like uh, 103 and 105 and 106 and 107, and uh, some other ones. I find many uh, times there where it says, uh, do not forget what the Lord has done. Do not forget the goodness of the Lord. But then I also find, uh, reading through those uh, books, you know, I came to the conclusion that it is a sin to forget what the Lord has done for us. And we will see that in some of the verses there. What happens if we forget uh, the good things that the Lord has done for us? And uh, <clears throat> just want to see, uh, look at three things, uh, what happens when we forget what the Lord has done for us. The first one is forgetting leads to unbelief. And then to rebellion and, uh, and we see that in scripture and we also see that experience that amongst people today where we forget to, where we stop thinking the Lord or we, where we forget uh, the good things the things that the Lord has done for us you know then very soon unbeliefs start to settle in we and then the next thing well, uh, is rebellion. Deuteronomy 8 verse 2 says, And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. <clears throat> so they were to remember the whole time that they were in the wilderness, what the Lord had done for them. And it says there, uh, God was testing them, uh, testing you to know what was in your heart. 
Did God need to test them to know what was in their heart? No, God knew what was in their heart. But the testing was for them. He wanted them to know what was in their heart, whether they were going to be true or not. So it was not for the Lord, for God to figure, find out whether they what was in their heart, because he knows what's in men's heart, right? But the question was rather to them, to, to for them to check themselves out and see what was in their heart. And so we know the story there, how they uh, <clears throat> complained and very soon forgot all the uh, good things that the Lord had done for them, how they, um, God led them through these 40 years. And then Psalm 106 or 7, uh, David says, Our fathers, when they were in Egypt, did not consider your won wondrous works. So here we find it. David says, Our fathers, when they were in Egypt, did not consider. So they forgot the 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 works of God. And then it says there, they did not remember the abundance of your steadfast love. So they did not remember the steadfast <coughs> love of God, but rebel by the sea, at the Red Sea. You know, God had brought them out of Egypt. God split at the Red Sea. He departed the waters there, and they came through. And then as soon as they got in, God split the rocks. Water came out, so they had water. You know, in the desert without water. Can you imagine? So God split the rock. And there was water. And then God fed them with manna. And then they uh, they want to meet. They complain. They want to meet. And God gave them meat also. But then it says, even when they had yet, they, had, uh, they still had the meat in their mouth, they started to complain. And then they wanted to go back. And then they demanded uh, new leadership. They were not content with their leader, Moses. So they wanted to go back and just ask for a new leader. And so that's what happened. They, they forgot <clears throat> the miracles that God had done for them. They grumbled and they, they, they remember back. They looked back to Egypt. And they said, oh, would it, if we could only go back where we had the leeks and the onions and all this stuff, but what they did not remember was how they were treated there as slaves. So they forgot all the goodness that the Lord did for them. And then the second thing, uh, forgetting makes us do foolish things. And we see that in Psalm 106, verse 19 and 20, where it says, They made a calf and harp and worshipped a metal image. They exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox that eats grass. See, forgetting the goodness of the Lord will make people do foolish things like here. What a foolish thing that was to do. To exchange the glory of God for a calf, for a golden calf that is nothing but a piece of metal. So forgetting makes people do foolish things. Psalm 106, verse 13, it says, But they soon forgot his works. They did not wait for his counsel. And then it says, Impatient people do foolish things. See, they soon forgot his works, and they did not wait for God. They got impatience. You know, impatient people, when we get impatient, <clears throat> we do all kinds of foolish things too. When we forget to thank God and realize what God has done for us, we will do foolish things. And also when we get impatient, we do things that, uh, that are not good. And then the third thing is forgetting ignites God's anger. And we also see that in Psalm 106, verse 21 where it says, They forgot God, their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. Therefore he said, Therefore he said he would destroy them. 
See, they forgot all these things there, and therefore God said he would destroy them. And then it says, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to turn away his wrath from destroying them. See, God's anger kindled there because of their unbelief, because they forgot all the wonders that God did. And had it not for Moses, had it not been for Moses, God would probably would have probably had to destroy them. Because a number of times there we, we find that, that uh, how Moses uh, stands in the gap there and he pleads with God not to destroy his people. And uh, God listened to Moses and he spared the people. It's because of Moses, because he was pleading with God not to, uh, not to destroy them. But it says there, therefore he said, I would destroy them. So God's forgetting the good things that God has done for us will uh, kindle God's anger. And then it says in verse 7 there, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 9 verse 7 says, Remember and do not forget how you provoked the Lord your God to wrath in the wilderness. From the day you came out of the land of Egypt until you came to this place, you have been rebellious against the Lord. See here, it reminds them not to forget how they provoke God to anger. And then Deuteronomy 9 verse 19 says, For I was afraid, this is Moses speaking here, of the anger and hot displeasure that the Lord bore against you, so that he was ready to destroy you, but the Lord listened to me that time also. So again, <clears throat> Moses pleads with God not to destroy his people. And God is so merciful. God is so patient with us. You know, it says, if all men would be liars, God would still be true. And if we fail him, he will never fail us. His patience will never run out. Even though we get impatient, but his patience will never run out. So we need to realize how merciful God is and all the good things that he has uh, done for us. So all of us can say that God has done great things in our lives, many things. And we need not to forget those things that God has done for us, but we need to remember all the good deeds that God has done for us, just like uh, David uh, did. I want to look some at some verses here where, where David uh, remembers the, the works of God. First one is uh, Psalm 77, verse 11 through 15, where David says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your works and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the people. You with your arm redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. So David says, remember the deeds of the Lord. <clears throat> First of all, he says there, Psalm 103, not to forget the good things. And here he says, remember, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your works, and I will meditate. Do we meditate on all the things that God has done for us? It is good to do that. You know, Peter says in Second Peter, I think it's in chapter 1 or 2, I'm not sure, where he talks about uh, how that we ought to grow in our relationship with God and in our knowledge in the Word. <clears throat> and then he says, but if you don't do that, 
then you will even forget that your sins have been for forgiven. You know, and that's what happens when we do not meditate on the good things that the Lord has done for us. That's what David did. He said, I will ponder all your works and I will meditate on your mighty, <clears throat> mighty deeds. Psalm 107, verse 1 and 2 says, O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. God's love endures forever. Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble. If you would look back in the past year, we would very quickly see that how many times God has redeemed us from trouble. God has redeemed us. God has saved us from, from hell. But not only that, God continually saves us from many troubles. As we go through life, <clears throat> sometimes we, we make uh, some decisions that are not very wise. Then we face, uh, we run into troubles. We bring ourselves into trouble. But, you know, looking back, how many times could you say that the Lord has redeemed me from trouble? I think all of us would be able to say at one time or another that God has redeemed me from trouble. And in Psalm 103, verse 10 through 12, he says, He does not deal with us according to our sins. Isn't that a blessing? Isn't that good that God doesn't deal with us according to our sins? Nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards us, towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgression from sin. You know, how many, tem how, how many times do we fail? God says he removes our sins. If we confess, if we repent, he forgives, and he says he will not remember them anymore. As far as the east is from the west, so far will he remove them. How far is that? How long would it uh, take you for, to, to go from, from the east to the west? There's no end to it. So when God takes them away, they're gone. And we need to remember that, that God has forgiven us. Once we come, in the, we, if we fail, we acknowledge that to God that we have failed, and you know what? He will forgive us, He will restore us, and He will never remember them again. In uh, Ephesians 2, verse 11 and 12, <clears throat> says, Therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the, the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at the time, at that time, separated from God, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. You know, we were all there at one time. Before we were saved, before we accepted the gift of salvation, you know, Paul says the Gentiles <clears throat> were without God, without hope in the world. They were excluded from the promise that God had given to his people, to his chosen people, the Israelites. He says, you were without hope, without God in the world. But when we come to him, he saves us and he forgives us of our sins and he removes them. As far as from the east to the west, and he remembers them no more. And we are never to forget that. If we realize that where we were and what God has done for us, that will bring us closer to him. And that will make us thankful. And then we can say, like Romans 8 verse 1, through three where Paul says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. 
For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. The Paul says here, what man could not do, God did it. What man and the law could not do, God did it. He sent his son and he condemned sin in the flesh. And therefore, there is no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Do we have a reason to be thankful? We should never forget this. Always remember that we were once without hope, without God, but now that we are saved, there is therefore no, no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Psalm 78 verse 4, David says, We will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done see david is saying here we will not hide them from our children we will tell our children the coming generation so that's uh, why we want to give an opportunity tonight for all of you to to share you know we are not to hide these things what God has done for us. <clears throat> you know, in Psalm, uh, in 1 Samuel 7, where the Israelites uh, uh, were fearing the, the Philistines, they were coming against them, and they had lost the, the ark, so they were without it 20 years. And uh, so finally Samuel uh, gets to them, encouraged them to, to repent of their sin and turn back to God. And they do. And then God leads them. And God gives them victory over the Philistines. And then Samuel sets up a stone there as a memorial. He calls that stone Ebenezer, uh, meaning thus far the Lord has helped us. So he set up a, a stone there as a memorial, not to forget what God had done, how God delivered them from the from the Philistines. And here David says, I will not hide them from their children, but tell the coming generation. So we are to pass it on, what God has done in our lives, all the good things, all the good deeds that God has done in our lives, in my life, we are to tell it to our children and pass it on so it goes down from generation to generation. And we should never hide them. And you know, thus we will be thankful, we will come closer to God, and uh, always remember the good things that God has done for us. You know, if we, one thing that I have learned, if, if, if we can look at everything that comes our way, if trouble comes our way, if we can look at it this way, that everything that God allows, allows to come in our way will be for our good. Because Romans 8.28 says, all things work for good for those that love the Lord. So if we have an attitude like that, if I face a trial, and if I look at it this way, well, it, if God allows it to happen in my life, then it must be for my good. You know, and, and many times we see it after. At the moment, oftentimes we ask God to take it away. But then oftentimes later on we see it, that it was good for us. <clears throat> because God knows what's good for us. And, and sometimes um, even decisions that we want to make, they are not good for us. And so God protects us. Sometimes at times when, uh, at the time where it happened, where we face the trial, we uh, we do not like it. We want to get rid of it. That's the probably the first thing that we ask for God to for God to take it away. But what about if God has a purpose in it? All things work for good for those that love the Lord. And if you have an attitude like that, 
then we can face problems much easier. You know, all of us will face troubles. So anything that God allows in our lives is for our good. And I'm, and I'm sure I'm convinced of that. I, I learned that. And once I learned that, you know, things are so much easier. You know, there's times where we, it's like we uh, go through life, we, it's like uh, uh, sailing on an ocean. Uh, you move along and, and there's times where there comes a storm where, you know, the sailors, they have to just uh, uh, stand still and just uh, wait to, for the storm to, to pass. And thus it's with our lives too. There's times where there's storms and, uh, you know, there's times where we just let our anchor down and just uh, ride out the storm. Even though we don't make much progress at that time, but, you know, we just hang on and then once the storm is on and we move along. And, you know, God allows those things in our lives to, to build character in our lives. And, you know, we get strong through those uh, trials. So that's uh, all I want to share, and uh, later on I want to get an opportunity uh, for you to share what uh, God has done for you, and I just encourage you not to hold back, give God glory, and thank God for what he has done, and so at this time we want to look at the slideshow, <coughs> Peter Yudreis has uh, prepared a slideshow, we want to look at them and just uh, sit back and see uh, what has taken place in the past year and as you go through the pictures there if anything comes to mind and uh, later on you want to share something about it uh, come up <clears throat> 